Do you ever think about a bottle of wine and how it gets to the shelf in the first place? If I were to ask you to start a wine company tomorrow, where would you begin? And how would you achieve that final stage of being able to sell wine bottles to your friends, neighbors, restaurants, bars, and so on? In this episode, we are examining just that, how a married couple took their love of wine to the next level with the creation of Resign Wine. Tucked into the heart of downtown Austin, Texas, is a building bustling with artwork. This is where I work as a senior video editor for The Chive. And the man responsible for most of the art in the building is the CEO and co-founder of the company, Leo Rezik. He and his brother John are about to address all of the employees for a monthly town hall meeting. The Chive is famous for its flagship website, and also its loyal fans wearing its t-shirts that say, Keep Calm Chive On, or Bill Murray's face on it, Chive Charities, William Murray Golf Apparel, and most recently, Chive TV. But besides Leo's endeavors with The Chive, he and his wife Tiffany are lovers of wine. So much so that they're studying and taking the classes to become sommeliers. Not only that, they started a wine company. So the curious individual that I am, I asked to sit down with Leo and Tiffany and discuss with them, how does one even start a wine company? What's up, YouTube fam? It is Javier Mercedes here for Interv Wednesday. That's an interview on a Wednesday. When did the idea start? When was the impetus of we should do a wine company? A lot of it does have to do with our artist, Zach Johnson. We found him at Oscar's, a little um, taqueria uh, in Venice Beach on Rose Avenue. He had his artwork. It was like in a hallway, and we each saw it at different times. And throughout our meal together, we're like, dude, did you see that artwork? Wasn't that really, like, so we tracked down the artist to this gallery in Venice called the Cave Gallery. I was able to buy these two prints and when Tiffany quit her job at Hulu, I gave her this gift. Because when I saw this artwork, the first thing that comes to my mind is, f*** it, I'm out. Right. <laughs> it's yeah. like yeah. they were hanging in our home. And so we were just looking at them every day. And man, how awesome would, would these be as a wine label? Right. <laughs> like, yeah, seriously. I was like, Tiff, if I can get a hold of Zach and try to license his artwork, If he says yes, we're doing this. Zach did say yes to licensing the art. And here's a clip of him explaining his art process to Leo and Tiffany in person. I kind of model this. I do a little photo shoot. You know, I get lights because I mean, I I can't really make this stuff up. It's too complicated to draw and to get the fabric realistic, I needed to have some legitimate, you know, references to work with. So totally. I do model everything out, you know, and then That's I kind awesome. of create like a composite of the computer and then I work off like a printed image, you know, yep. and then do the color. So And you're calling this like an acid series? Is that yeah, what you're yeah. Acid in the ice cream. We commissioned him for the rose, right. which is the first wine we ever made. He was like, well, what do you want the model to wear? And I had no idea that yeah. he, he actually hired talent to like, Make these to model ones. for mm-hmm. these crazy kinetic labels. Yeah. I knew we wanted a French theme because these are Rhone style wines that we started off with. And when you think France, you think, you know, the classic black and white striped shirt. Yeah. And so I was like, I'd love for her to have a skirt like that. And then, you know, kind of make it throwback. We'll go polka dots on top. And as she's spinning around, we'll get, you know, this awesome shot of the skirt up and, and legs and arms flying everywhere. He hired a model, took a bunch of shots of her spinning around, and yeah. we got to see like the anatomy of, of how he it approaches it yeah. to fruition. Well, what's even crazier is you can see the actual paper. Yeah. How did you guys meet the winemaker himself? Right after we had the harebrained idea of like, okay, if Zach Johnson will license us the labels, we're gonna make a wine. We need to find a winemaker. AKA, how the f*** do you find a winemaker, (laughs) right? So this is Leo and Tiff. They want to get to making wine, but they need a winemaker. Who is that and how do they get there? Well, turns out Leo and Tiff are investors in a wine club company called Wine Awesomeness. You get three bottles a month in the mail and there's this awesome little booklet that comes with it. The gentleman who wrote the copy for this, uh, his name's Peter Eastlake. Leo and Tiff hit up their buddy that runs Wine Awesomeness. Their buddy introduces them to Peter Eastlake. We went out, met with him, and told him what we wanted to do. And we didn't even interview any other winemakers. He's like, I've got just the guy for you. And that guy was winemaker Phil. Like the stars had to have lined at that point. Like we we weren't just gonna go knock on some doors and make cold calls. You have to know a guy to know a guy 
to know a guy that knows how to get to making resign wine. Got it? You can ask him any question about making wine, and I mean, his background is farming and chemistry, and there's a lot that goes into making a bottle of wine. Mm -hmm. Any question you ask him, he's not going to make you feel like an idiot. You I know, just nod right? my head and say, uh -huh. yeah, uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. And I love it. Like, this is way more fun than my actual job. <laughs> <laughs> and so, this, I wanna, is the, this is the fun part of the wine industry. Right? But, yeah. <laughs> true, yeah. true. That leads me to my next question. So, you meet him, and how does it go from. I have this plot of land that you like transitioned from somebody else that already owned it or? Yeah, so we're sourcing. So we don't own our own grapes. We know all the vineyard farmers and owners that we're sourcing from. Mm -hmm. um, and so we work with Phil and he's been making wine for almost like 15, 20 years under his own private label called Inkadu. Mm -hmm. And Phil's from Sonoma, so he's got great relationships with these growers. He's given us so much runway to just do things. So we're working with cooperages in France and buying barrels. Phil's the winemaker and he's extremely hands-on, but he's given us a lot of the freedom as being entrepreneurs to really and, run it like a business. And, that, and that's what we told him going into it. We're like, hey, we're, we're in this to just learn more about wine in general. You could wake up tomorrow morning and buy juice. Like there's a whole market for going out and buying barrels of wine that someone's already made. You can throw it in a bottle, slap your label on it, mm -hmm. and sell it. We wanted to take a soup to nuts approach. Basically, all we're doing is tasting a ton of different wines, telling him what we like and don't like about wines, and he's just sits there taking notes and narrowing down, like, I know I'm gonna get th these Syrah grapes from this vineyard and these Mavet grapes from this vineyard. Because he just knows everyone, he's got the facilities for his own winery, but also is able to do what we call as custom crush. Yeah, you were saying It better be love. good, because I tell you what, you I've done this time, before, you know? so this is really good in this. <laughs> <laughs> We're actually going to Sonoma next week, and we'll be tasting through our blend to make the GSM, which is the Grenache Syrah Mavedre. I mean, the color is just off the chart. Oh, wow. We sourced two different blocks for the Grenache, and we sourced from two completely different vineyards for the Syrah. And so we'll taste and then determine the blend, too. How much Grenache do we want, how much Syrah, and then how much Mavedre. It's cool that you guys aren't even bound by, like, just one region. You're just like, eh, well, Let's throw that in there. Yeah. <laughs> and what we're really striving to do too is just make a balanced wine. Mm -hmm. So not too over tannin. So tannin is like if you take a drink of wine, if your mouth feels like it's like really like grippy. dry and grippy yeah. on your tongue and around your cheeks, yeah. that is gonna signify the high tannins. Conversely, if your mouth is like watering, like salivating, high acidity. <laughs> and then yeah. can you add to nullify some of those things? Well, you, I mean, can't, you can't add or, or subtract, but like we also have to trust our winemakers. So like yeah. when our Happy Trail Syrah first got bottled, we got it and I was like, oh my gosh, dude, the, the tannins on this thing. You take yeah. a sip and it's you're like- It's such a wine thing to say. It is. I'm gonna, I'm gonna totally say that when I'm at a fine restaurant. It's so like, true, the tannins. Oh man, the tannins on this. It is. So you it was say like, these it tannins was, are ripping my face it's, off. Yeah, <laughs> it, and it, it yeah. was. And Phil's like, what do you think? And I'm like, um, so the Syrah and the tannins, it's like really high. He's like. It'll tame down, it'll tame down. And sure and it enough, it, it, mellowed. it totally mellowed when it out. In the bottle? Yeah. Yes, in the it's bottle. Crazy. If you guys have the idea to do wine, is it like, all right, let's do a wine bottle, and then you have to wait eight years before it's yeah. aged and do, it, exactly. done all that stuff? Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah, so that's why, I mean, even though we started the company in 15, we'll only be bottling our second vintage because we sourced 15 grapes for our first red vintage, which was bottled last year. Mm -hmm. And then 16 reds are getting mm -hmm. bottled now in 18. But yeah, we, we do age it because if we didn't, it'd be awful. You know, yeah. it's got to take on the flavors of the oak barrel. Like it's yeah. just got to mellow out or the tannins are, are too high, the acid's too high. It'll just, it'll rip your face off. So yeah. there's a and reason. Ice cream. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Coming for it. Yeah. <laughs> We went into this like, this will be a fun little side project for wife to have. And now it is a full on yeah. business. Hey, we're gonna be bottling on this date in, in March. This Make sure you deliver the bottles, the labels, Cola the foil approval. capsules, the, the, and I, the corks. I noticed you guys, have, you guys were choosing corks and everything like that too. There's so, oh. there's so, so much that goes into making a bottle. Of, it's my full-time well, job right now. You're studying to become a SOM, are you not? Yeah, so we did our um, introductory sommelier class in August, and it was my birthday gift. So for my birthday, Leo gave me an exam. Was it hard to start selling wine once it was made? Licenses. Okay, so this is like a mother trucker. It takes <laughs> forever to get licenses. So there's 
TTB, which is the national level, TABC, which is the Texas level, Travis County, and then the city of Austin. You've got to get like approvals and licenses for everything before you can even sell a thing. The last thing I want to do is get the winery permit and be able to sell our wine and all of our wines in California. We arranged to have the wine shipped here. I thought I had this brilliant idea to store all this wine in a ground floor storage facility. The same thing like if you were moving out of your house and you moved, needed to move your furniture into oh, a storage oh, facility. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. I rented this massive truck. I put all the wine on pallets. Mm -hmm. Nine in, pallets. Into the truck, bring it to the storage facility, and we had one of those hydraulic lifts on the back of the truck. Mm -hmm. So you'd put the pallet on it and then you just lower it down. We couldn't get the wine off the truck. Like, we didn't have a forklift anymore, we just had a, a pallet jack, and we almost dumped a whole pallet of wine and like oh killed ourselves. I'm not so doing we, this anymore, Leo. We pulled I'm the ripcord on that idea. We parked, parked our truck. The truck and the cul-de-sac in front of our house. I had to go to three different Lowe's and find a portable air conditioning unit that looked like R2-D2, put it in the back of the truck and pull this hose, because you need a vent mm -hmm. for that air conditioning, out to the back of the truck, pull the door down, mm -hmm. rig up these pieces of Shit. wood. That, and then the chain, too. You got this giant chain, chained chain it up to lock. lock it so no one would steal our yeah. 500 cases of wine. <laughs> and it sits in front of our house. For a week. We yeah, still yeah, didn't yeah. know where we were gonna put our wine. We were waiting for the weather to break. Found these guys, these angels, who would store our wine, temperature controlled. All I had to do was drive it out to Johnson City. Piece of cake. <laughs> so I go to leave to take this truckload of wine to Johnson City. So there's this branch coming off a tree. I go, I hit it at about 30 miles per hour. It carves a hole in the top of the truck. We're talking like this big yeah. on my way out to deliver the wine. So long story short, we delivered the wine. It's sitting in nice, beautifully air conditioned space. <laughs> and I have to return this truck that I only said I was gonna rent for one day, like eight days later. Because you had to keep it out in the front. Yeah. So our, our Truck rental, which was going to be like $350 for a day, our bill at the end of it was like $3,500 because I had to pay for the day eight days is. extra and I completely destroyed the truck in the <laughs> making. Crazy. Any last words of wisdom? Don't put too much pressure on yourselves. Don't have too high expectations. There's businesses that can blow up and catch fire and have hockey stick growth. We're not looking for that. Even if that happened to us and it got really popular, we'd run out of wine because we don't have that much. Yeah. Yeah. That for me too, I mean, I've never sold wine before. Mm -hmm. So everything has this huge learning curve, right? This is what I know, this is what I don't know, and this is, I mean, selling the wine. Like, this is my product, mm -hmm. this is mm -hmm. the brand, this is our story, this is who we are. Do you like it? Yeah. Let's drink the wine. So. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, it's just, we're not trying to make a fortune off of it. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a saying that, you know, the wine industry has been turning billionaires into millionaires for many years. <laughs> True. So. Yeah. That's hilarious. Yeah. This has been such a learning experience, I hope, for you guys as much as me. I know so much about, so much more about wine. And I'm gonna be like the royal tannin bombs. There you tannin. go. Like, uh, why yeah. not? <laughs> why not? Check out Resign Wine at resignwine.com. This is Javier Mercedes, and if you liked this whole interview-esque thing, subscribe. Till next video, till next Inner Wednesday. I'll see you guys next time. Cheers. Cheers, y'all.